Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I am bringing you a bumper book haul. I think I have about 25 books to talk to you about so I'm gonna try and whiz through them as quickly as I can. In my defence, I haven't done a physical book haul in quite a while. Although, I don't need to defend myself. I make my own money. I spend it on the shit I want. Also, to be fair, I didn't buy most of these books, so... And also, to be fair, these are books that I have accumulated over quite a long time. Like, some of these books I actually received or bought months ago. But one that arrived only the other day is a brand new release, and this is Greek Myths. This is written by Jean's Bookish Thoughts, who I'm sure you all know, and if you don't, for some strange reason, I will leave her channel links down below in the description for you to check out. This is Jean's stunning introduction to Greek Myths. If you don't know, Jean is a classicist, so she is super well informed on all of this stuff, and this is a beautiful illustrated edition with the illustrations done by Katie Ponder. While this is meant for kids and has these stunning illustrations, I'm definitely gonna get so much out of this book because when I read these sort of very popular Greek retellings of books, I often feel quite lost as to who is who. So I think this is gonna be a fantastic little refresher and introduction for me. And it's gonna be a great source for me to turn to if I ever read one of these Greek retellings again and I'm like, I don't know who this person is. But while we're on the books for younger readers, I have two books by Muhammad Khan. I have Kick the Moon and I Am Thunder. I have heard so many amazing things about Muhammad Khan's writing and I've never read any of their books before. This follows our main character who is a teenage boy that has a lot of different pressures in his life, including his troublemaker friends, the pressure that's put on him um, at his job, at, as part of his GCSEs. And all this boy wants to do is create comic books. He doesn't really feel like there's a space for him to be himself until he meets Kelly, who seems like a kindred spirit. Things take a sinister turn with his friend group and Kelly becomes wrapped up in this as well. And it forces our main character to decide what kind of person he's gonna be. In I Am Thunder, we follow a teenage girl who feels quite invisible until she is noticed by the hottest boy in school. But this boy has a secret and being involved with him leads our main character to have to decide whether she's gonna keep quiet and betray her beliefs or speak out and betray her heart. As I said, I've heard so many incredible Incredible things about this author so I'm really excited to read these two books. I also have two books by Jacqueline Woodson. I have read two of her books before. I have read her like middle grade memoir Brown Girl Dreaming which is written in verse and then I read Read at the Bone which is her latest adult novel. This one is called If You Come Softly and it is about the teenage romance between Jeremiah who is black and Ellie who is white and Jewish. They don't see this as an issue but the people around them seem to. It's a really short book so I think I'm gonna fly through this one. Another Brooklyn is a novel for grown-up readers as opposed to younger readers and it follows the friendship between four young women it is set in Brooklyn in the 1970s and it follows the really formative experiences that these four girls share when they are in that transition period from being like teenagers and young adults into proper grown-ups. Love books about female friendship so I'm really looking forward to trying this one out. Sticking with the adult fiction, I have a book that I kind of have mixed feelings about and that is How to Be Famous by Catelyn Moran. I used to be quite a big Catelyn Moran fan. How to Build a Girl was a really formative book for me and it depicted things that I'd never really seen depicted in fiction before, but I'm really not a fan of Catelyn Moran anymore. Like her journalism, I find really irritating. <laughs> this book follows the main character, Joanna, from How to Build a Girl. And I am intrigued to see where her story has moved on to, but I am going into this book with a slight trepidation. Next, I have Future Popes of Ireland by Dara Martin. I am a huge supporter of Irish literature. If you've been around this channel for a little while, you probably know that I host the Irish Readathon alongside the incredible Aoife and Elaine. So this may be one that I hold off on reading until we get to the Irish Readathon in March. In 1979, Bridget Doyle becomes convinced and determined that someone in her family should be the very first Irish Pope. Thirty years later, it doesn't seem like any of her grandchildren have any interest in becoming the first Irish Pope. I'm sensing a lot of like messy family dynamic vibes from this book. And when that has like an Irish angle to it, that's something that I really enjoy reading about. I think this book is gonna be really up my street. Next, I have This Hostile Life. One of the things that I have really struggled with when it comes to hosting the Irish Readathon is that a lot of Irish literature is extremely white. It's an issue across 
the publishing industry, it's an issue across like the arts scene in Ireland. So I'm really pleased that this book is now on my shelf. This is a collection of stories that deal a lot with the immigrant and refugee experience. It talks a lot about um, direct provision in Ireland. While I'm tempted to hold off on this one until the Irish Readathon, I don't think I'm going to be able to resist reading it. Next I have a couple of proofs that I grabbed from work. This is If I Can't Have You by Charlotte Levin. The finished copy of this is now out. This book is about a woman who becomes very obsessed by her romantic interests and it becomes very clear that the problem in her love life is her. I've heard lots of good things about this one, that it's compulsively readable, that it's uncomfortable at points but a complete page turner. It sounds quite different from some stuff that I normally read so I'm excited to delve into this one. Next I have The Glass Hotel by Emily St John Mandel. I have read two of her books before. Um, Station Eleven is one that I absolutely love and I think it's the book that she's most well known for. This is a book about greed and guilt, about art and the ghosts of our past. It follows a lot of different characters and if you've read Emily and John Mandel's previous books that you know that this is something that she does fantastically is she manages to really seamlessly weave together the lives of lots of different people. Again it's one that I have heard so many good things about. While we're on proofs that I grabbed from work I have a couple of non-fiction proofs as well. This is No Fixed Abode by Maeve McLenahan. The author is a journalist who has spent a large body of her work looking into homelessness in Britain. And this book collects together all of her observations and gives voice to those that are so often ignored by society. Homelessness is a really devastating problem and it's not just a problem in Britain, it's a huge problem that we have here in Ireland. I think this is going to be a really difficult read but one that is very important as well. Next I have Sex Robots and Vegan Meat by Jenny Kleeman. I think this is probably one of my favourite book titles of all time. This is another book that is thoroughly, thoroughly researched and it is about some of the shocking advances that have been made in science. The author talks about a plethora of different experiences that she has had, including eating a priceless lab-grown chicken nugget and having a conversation with a sex robot. It's Black Mirror but real life. I'm particularly interested in the sex robots aspect of this book because it's a long story but a few years ago I had to do a lot of research into that subject for my degree. <laughs> Next I have four books from the same publisher. All of these books are from Pluto Press who are a political kind of radical publisher who were brought to my attention by my good friend Hope. I will leave her Instagram linked down below in the description. You should definitely check out. I have three books from their Outspoken series. The first of those is A Feminism Interrupted by Lola Olufemi. This was the book in particular that Hope was reading that I was like, yes, I need to read this book. This book really challenges how linked feminism and consumerism and capitalism have become. And I'm definitely guilty of being one of those like white feminists that has a slogan t-shirt that says girl power on it. I think this is one that I'm really gonna learn a lot from. I also have Mask Off by JJ Bola. This is a book that examines masculinity. While I read a lot about gender, a lot about sexuality, it is often from a very female perspective. This book is an urgent call to unravel and redefine masculinity and again I think I'm gonna do so much learning. I have Behind Closed Doors by Natalie Fines. This is a book that is all about sex education which is a topic that I'm super interested in. I remember being a teenager and basically deciding whether I was gonna study English Lit or become a sex education teacher and I am obsessed with this cover. And the final book I have from Pluto Press is Decolonizing the University. So I feel like I know on a very surface level that there are huge problems with institutionalized and overt racism in universities. Like I feel like I know that on a very surface level, but I feel like I don't know many specifics. So I think this book is really going to give me the tools to better understand that and be better equipped to discuss this with people. On the subject of learning and self-improvement, I have Women Don't Owe You Pretty by Florence Given. This is one that I've already read. I bought it and read it within hours, which is something I never do. I am very guilty of leaving books to sit on my shelves for months. So it was really refreshing to buy something and then just read it straight away. This is a book that really challenges outdated narratives of the patriarchy. It's a really empowering book. It has phenomenal illustrations that are really inclusive of all different kinds of women. If you do wanna hear more of my thoughts on this book, then look forward to my July reading wrap up. Next, I have Wine Girl by Victoria J. This is a book that I wasn't sure if I wanted to read, but the publicist like 
really sold it to me. The book is all about the youngest sommelier in the US. Is that how you say that word? I don't drink. So I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if this book is for me. <laughs> but this book is very much about the author's personal journey. It just so happens that, you know, this is her job and it's a really big part of her life. It's a book about fractured friendships. It's a book about abuse and surviving a traumatic childhood. And the restaurant industry isn't really something that I know anything about. So it would be really intriguing to learn about that through this book. On the subject of food, I have two cookbooks by Jack Monroe. I love Jack Monroe so much. <laughs> tin Can Cook is a recipe book that is all about using tin cans in your cooking, being really simple, really affordable. And Good Food for Bad Days is a cookbook that is all about having really comforting foods, the foods that you can make really easily and really are nourishing and can uplift you when you're just not feeling great. And I have quite a difficult relationship with food and I've dipped in and out of these books before but I really would just like to cook my whole way through them because the way Jack Monroe writes about food is a way that really connects with me as someone who has had a really difficult relationship with food in my past. I'm also sometimes a bit of a lazy cook so if something's easy that's great for me. We're almost at the end guys don't worry poetry. This is Bantam by Jackie Kay. I have read a lot of Jackie Kay's writing in the past. I've read a few of her poetry collections. I've read her novel Trumpet. I have read her memoir Red Dust Road. I think she's a phenomenal writer. And this is a poetry collection all about the fighting spirit. Another one of my favourite poets is Carol Ann Duffy and this is Standing Female Nude. I have read quite a few poems from this collection before but I have never owned a copy of this collection. This is her first collection so I think it's going to be really interesting to be able to look at some of her earliest writing and compare it to more of some of her more recent work. And another of my favourite poets is Kate Tempest and this is Brand New Ancient. This is poetry but it is the story story of two families whose lives are intertwined. It's set in the backdrop of a city but it's also woven with classical myth. I'm very excited to have books from three of my favourite poets of all time. I used to write poetry quite a lot and now I kind of write it quite sporadically so I really want to try and get back into it and I think something that I've always said is if you want to write poetry you need to read poetry and the final poetry book I have is something that I think will also really inspire me to get back into writing and this is a slam you're going to want to hear this which is poems chosen by Nikita Gill. This is an anthology made up of some of the freshest most contemporary voices in spoken word poetry. Spoken word poetry is definitely the kind of poetry that I'm really interested in reading and writing. This collection is aimed at younger readers for getting them into poetry and I think when I'm trying to rekindle my love with poetry this will be really beneficial for me too. The final book I'm going to talk about is one that I wasn't sure if I was going to include in this haul but it's a book and I bought it. This is Fuckity Fuck Fuck Fuck, a adult colouring book. I've been kind of stressed lately um because there's a global pandemic and that kind of thing. And I found using this colouring book to be really relaxing. I've only done a few pages so far. This one says bitchy McFuckerton and this one says bitch tits. I don't know why I've only done the ones that say bitch. Let me find you the one that I'm doing at the moment. This one says fuck stain. I really don't want to hold up all of these books to try and get a thumbnail, but I'm gonna have to. I'm honestly just so excited to read all of these books. Like obviously I'm excited for all of the books that I ever haul, but just looking at this stack of books in front of me, I'm so... I just love books, you know? Are there any of these books that you've already read? Are there any that you are excited to read now that I have spoken about them? Let me know in a comment down below and let me know what you're currently reading. I would love to hear. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.